Hi, this video is part of my statistical thinking series where I show how statistics can be applied in a typical data science pipeline. In the last video, we saw how statistics plays a role in missing value imputation. In case if you are not seeing the video, you can click the link on the top and watch it. In this video, we are going to more focus on uh, usage of statistic in the feature selection pipeline. And more specifically, we are going to focus on categorical values in this video. In the future video, we will go for uh, continuous values and other values. But here it's going to be more on categorical values. So before going and framing the problem statement, let's quickly go and walk through the data set. So uh, let's get started. So in this case, I am importing pandas and numpy uh, pandas to uh, read my incoming CSV file and to visualize I am having Seaborn and matplotlib. Uh, so let me run this. I'm going to use the churn data set. The data set is available in my GitHub repo in this link. And if you want, you can download it and use it or just use the URL directly uh, yeah, with the same command pandas.readcsv. Uh, and then uh, well, I'm going to run this. I'm going to make a copy of this particular data set to an, uh, another data frame so that if I want to go back, I can go back to the uh, master copy. And then let us quickly see the table. So this is how the data set looks like. I have multiple variable here, customer, gender. There are some categorical variable. Uh, most are categorical. There are some continuous variable like monthly charges and total charges. And finally, I have the target column, which is the churn. This is whether a customer has churned or not. Uh, so it's a binary classification problem. And what I'm going to do in this video is basically, I'm going to take two of the categorical values, uh, the independent categorical variables, and then see the significance of that variable against the target. So basically, if the if the variable is not significant, we can just drop it and we need not use in the uh, machine learning pipeline. If it is significant, then maybe if we want to do use it in the machine learning pipeline. Now, coming back uh, to feature selection, this is not the only way you can do feature selection. You can also do like uh, forward selection or backward elimination. You can also, if you have a large data set, you can subsample your data set into multiple chunks and then train a maybe XGBoost or random forest classifier. And then uh, basically we in the each classifier, the future importance you get, you can have some prob probabilistic ways of uh, selecting the top features. There are multiple uh, options available, but since we will be doing data analysis and EDA, this is a good way to get an understanding of the significance of the feature, uh, whether we want to use it or drop it. Uh, that is, it's not worth it to continue with the next, uh, next cycle with those features at all. That's the idea over here. So now that we know the data set, what we are going to do is we are going to use the gender column and see whether this variable plays a significance in the customer churning or not. And then we are going to use the paperless billing column and see whether this particular uh, variable, the paperless billing yes or no, uh, plays a significance with the churn column or not. So those are the two things um, uh, we are going to see now. Right. Let me quickly uh, check the uh, data frame info. So basically, you can see over here, uh, gender is an object that is a string data type category. It's, it's already in a string value. Paperless billing also in a string value and churn is also uh, a yes or no category. So all of these are categorical variables. Uh, let's quickly inspect the data frame. I am printing the number of rows, columns, the features and the unique values for um, each of the feature. So now if you see over here, like uh, basically I have 7,043 rows and 10 columns. I'm going to more, I'm more worried about gender, which has uh, two categories, male and female, paperless billing, which has again two categories, uh, yes or no, and churn, which has two categories, yes or no, right? So the uh, first thing we are going to do is we are going to frame our uh, problem statement, right? Uh, so let's first set our hypothesis over here. Now, uh, by default, uh, uh, I'm going to set my uh, null hypothesis telling there is no relationship between uh, two categorical values. And the alternate hypothesis over here is there's a relationship between uh, two, cate two categorical values. I'm going to use the default alpha value, uh, p, uh, p value less than 0 0.05. Uh, to make the decision whether I uh, fa fail to reject the null hypothesis or I reject the null hypothesis, right? That's what I'm going to uh, do over here. Now, the questions we are going to answer over here is basically, is there a relationship between uh, the users who are churned to gender of the user? That's what I was talking about, the first variable. The second thing we are going to do is, is there a relationship between the paperless billing if somebody is opting yes or no? whether the users, uh, there's a high probability of the user churning or not. These are the two things that we are going to uh, test it out. Now, 
before getting that uh, there are multiple statistical text available test uh, test available so we have the chi square text uh, chi square test which shows the significance of a relationship that's what we are going to see in this video we are, we are going to run an uh, chi square test and see whether that particular variable variable is significant to the target or not there are also other tests available like kramer v or uh, you have fisher's exact test uh, now chi square test shows the significant or significance of the relationship whereas the kramer v uh, test also shows the strength of the relationship and i will talk about it briefly but maybe i will have a separate video for kramer v test in this we are going to focus on chi square test and the next one is the fisher's exact test uh, basically Fisher's exact test can work only on a two by two matrix. When I say two by two matrix, basically in this case, I have only uh, two, uh, two categories, yes or no, and gender, male or female. So Fisher's exact test may also help, but it's mostly used for where you do not have a lot of uh, categories in a particular bucket. So if you are less than five categories in a bucket, Fisher's test, uh, exact test is a uh, good one to use. But in this case, like we have a lot of, uh, uh, lot of samples available, so we are not going to use Fisher's exact test. There's a modified version of Fisher's exact test as well, uh, but uh, which can which can cover more than two by two matrix. But let's uh, let's let's focus on chi square test. So the first thing I'm going to do is I the gender is going to be my first column that I'm going to see, right? If you see what I'm doing is I'm just uh, taking the gender out of the data frame and doing a value counts. So I'm checking how much value is there in gender. So basically, male has around 3,555 rows and female has 3,488. Almost similar uh, rows for both. Let me quickly visualize the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a count plot and quickly visualize the data. The first, the first thing to understand significance is just visualize it. Sometimes you exactly know whether that variable is going to play a significant part or not. But said that you also want to go further and run a statistical test to prove your uh, hypothesis whether it's a significant or not, right? So if you see this particular uh, count plot that I have, uh, you can see like for both female and male, uh, the graph looks almost similar. The churn rate, the the basically uh, the non-churn rate is 0.36 percent, and churn rate is 0 0.13. It's 0.37 and 0.13. As you can see here, even if I use this particular variable in a model, it's not going to be significant because both plays uh, uh, same role over here. It's kind of uh, constant, right? Uh, I can I can uh, I can visually say okay, it may not uh, uh, add any value. But I want to go and do a statistical test to uh, prove my uh, hypothesis, right? That's what I'm going to do here. Now, before getting into the details of it, the first thing we need to understand is like statistics alone cannot prove anything, right? Most of the tests that we do are placed on relative likelihood. So what the practical, what, what I'm coming to say is the practical importance of the results that we are seeing here is something we have to decide. It can be based on the domain knowledge or it can be based on uh, the business process understanding as well, right? So I'm going to give an example. I'm going to, uh, as we go into the paperless billing, uh, I'm going to uh, tell what I, I'm going to kind of show you what I am meaning over here. Uh, but most of the statistic tests are only relative likelihood and the alpha value on how uh, confident you want the output to be it all depends on how you set it by default it's set to 0 0.05 but it's not tested it should be it needs to be 0 0.05 it can be 0 0.1 0 0.01 or whatever value you are comfortable with for your business process so uh, said that let me uh, quickly get started uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is see the, the way chi square test works is first thing we have to do is we have to create a contingency table. So contingency table are also called cross tab. Uh, they are used to summarize the relationship between several categorical values. That's what a contingency table is. So here I am using like uh, pandas dot cross tab. And I'm giving gender as uh, my uh, one categorical column and the churn as the second categorical column. So once I uh, get it and let me print the values over here. So you can see basically you have yes or no on the top and then male, female or male. And you're getting the count uh, of uh, occurrence in the each bucket. That's what and contingency table is. Basically the contingency table records each frequency of one categorical value over here. 
and is compared against the category uh, compares against the second categorical value that is on top in, in in our case gender is one categorical value and churn is the other categorical value now i can go and get an particular index of the categorical value over here and that's what i am uh, kind of doing over here suppose i want to get the first of uh, the in the start with zero index so say i want to get like uh, the zeroth index that is the first value i can just uh, go and run this command i lock and it will give me 2549 and 939 right now to run chi square text i am going to use the stats package uh the skypy package skypy stats package which has an uh, chi square contingency table and in this case i am going to run an uh, chi square test of independence that is what i am going to uh, kind of uh, run there are multiple ways you can run chi square test there are multiple methodologies i am going to use the uh, pearson's uh, chi square uh, test for independence that's what i'm going to use here so i'm going importing the stat package and then for the for the uh, chi square contingency i need to feed a contingency table so i need to feed a list of values of different uh, different uh, categories over here so that's what i am passing over here if you see over here i have the gender and churn count i log zero dot values and i have the second one as one dot values we have only uh, two categories over here so i am having one and two if i have three categories or four categories i just do like uh, i log two i log three and pass all of it and then i am calling the um, Uh, stats dot chi square square contingency, which will give me an uh, chi square statistics output. It will give me a p value. It will give me a degrees of freedom, and then uh, the final value is just array. I am going to skip it for now. So. Uh, if you see the this particular contingency chi square contingency it takes an if you, this is the method it takes an observed value that is what, what you are seeing now the observed value is what we have observed and then it takes kind of an uh, correction value which which let's forget for now and i take a lambda value if by default it's run say uh, pearson chi square test but if you want to uh, run like log likelihood or something else you can uh, in the lambda value you can give that as well right so let me Run this output. Let me run this cell, and then let me print the chi square value, p value, and degrees of freedom over here. Right um, now, the chi square value is point four eight. So, so basically, I will explain like what the chi square test is. Uh, it's point four eight. The more the chi square value is. uh basically the more probability that uh, the variable is a statistically uh, significant variable right in this case it's uh, 0.48 now the by default this function also print the p value for it based on the chi square table now like a t test table and or like a z score table you also have chi square table i have i have just copied a part of the table over here below right so if you go and see in this case basically the degree of freedom for our case is 1 degree of freedom is number of categories that we have we have 2 minus 1 is degree of freedom so in our case it's 1 and then we have point 48 if you go and see in this table basically point 48 is close to this and that's why you are getting a p value of point uh, 48 right so in this case the p value is a point 48 like now Uh, if you if you the the alpha value or the critical value that we had set is uh, p value is less than 0.05 if you go by uh, that one uh, basically in this case what we are doing is we are um, we kind of uh, uh, the null hypothesis is true because this value is not statistically significant because it is not less than 0.05 so in this case we are failing to reject the null hypothesis uh, that means the male uh, the the gender column is not basically significant along with the churn column and when we are doing a feature selection we can just drop it and move forward right so that's what uh, kind of with the gender column let's also go to the paperless billing column but before i want to go there i quickly want to show what is chi square statistics so chi square statistics is nothing but the sum of observed value and expected value some uh, minus the expected value uh, square by expected value now let me quickly run the next one so basically we created a contingency table but now i am creating a contingency table with the sum of each column and each row right uh, now your observed value is what we passed on the top the expected value is nothing but for each of the column say for 2549 that 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 uh, row total into the column total 
by the total number of records that's what the expected value is and you do it for each and every value when you do to when you have 2549 is 2549 minus uh, 3488 into 5174 divided by 7043 so similarly for 939 it's expected value is 3488 uh, into 1869 by 7043 so you calculate for each of this and you divide it by uh, divided by the expected value again what we get and you sum each of this observation that's what your chi-square statistics is so the more your observed values and expected value are close to each other you may get a lower chi-square value about when, when it's kind of way apart when it's significantly apart then you may get an uh, higher chi-square value so that's what chi-square test is uh, about right now let us go to the next part of it paperless billing by by business understanding or by even like simple common sense we know like paperless billing might not contribute to churn, churn right paperless billing is typically uh, somebody hops in who want to go green and everything so let's check like whether the statistics also says the same thing now let me kind of uh, run the paperless billing value counts and you can see like in the yes category there are 4171 records and the no category there are 2872 records right let me do the same thing let me uh, visualize it first whatever i did i did a count plot for gender let me do it here and now if you see the count plot right let you see basically when the paperless billing is yes uh, the, the the churn rate is pretty high it's like 0.39 and 0.20 so the churn rate is almost close to uh, say like 40 percent maybe right and when the paperless billing is no the churn rate is relatively less it's it's very minor so this shows basically that is a there is some uh, importance or significance between your significant relationship between your uh, paperless billing and the churn value right that's what it looks like but let's go and do the chi square test on it and see whether there is any significance or not so let me again do the same thing i'm doing a cross tab now uh, which is my i'm creating a contingency table that's the input to my uh, that's the that's going to be my input to my uh, stats function so if this is the contingency table i have now let me print the first value that is high lock of zero and you're going to see 2403 and 469 i'm going to feed the data in a similar way but into in this case i am having a different variable i'm going to feed the paperless billing right uh, i am p i am just feeding the high lock zero and then high lock one values and i'm getting uh, basically the chi square p value and uh, your degree of freedom so let me run this and let me print the output now if you see the output over here basically the chi square value has increased significantly and the p value is almost like it's minus e to e to power minus 58 so it's almost close to zero right it is showing in an exponential way but it's almost close to uh, zero now even though in a practical sense we know maybe paper bill is billing not important by data right what we can actually see is we have evidence against the null hypothesis over here right so basically we reject the null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis is true which says that there's a significant uh that there's basically a significant importance where significant relationship between your paperless billing and churn value and this some variable maybe i want to use in my model now one point i said on the top is basically if you see like statistics alone cannot prove anything right it is just a relative likelihood and maybe paperless billing is showing some significance as a correlation but it may it may not there not, may not be a real relationship or uh, causation over here and that's where your domain understanding comes into play and maybe you want to really see the practical importance of this result over here and uh, as you saw like basically we have a gender column uh, where we, can, we did not have any statistical significance so we can uh, remove it and this may be I, I can keep it in my pipeline and see it further uh, or I can just drop it based on my uh, business understanding uh, in this case. So that's about it uh, with uh, with this particular video. In the next video, we will uh, use other statistical tests uh, to come to compare continuous value. Thank you.